In today's English lesson, you will learn all about spots. Let's get started. Don't miss a lesson. Click the red subscribe button, then click the bell. Hello, Real Fluency friends. I'm Trisha, and I'm here to teach you real English used in real life so that you can reach real fluency now. And today, you will learn all the meanings of the word spot and around 11 idioms that use the word spot. And at the end, I will give you a link to download an MP3 to help you study them. As a noun, spot can mean a small, usually round mark on something, for example, a stain. For example, ladybugs have spots, and so do some animals. But usually it refers to something you don't want, like a spot on your clothes. As a noun, it can also mean a particular place or point, as in, this might be a good spot to rest for a while. And if you've ever watched the TV show Big Bang Theory, you'll know that one of the people on the show, Sheldon, has a spot. He has a spot, a place on the couch that is like his. He call, they call it Sheldon's spot. And I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but I kind of have a spot of my own on my couch that I like. And I don't really want other people sitting there either. It's perfect. I can look at my computer. I can see the TV. I can look outside. It's my spot. And maybe I shouldn't share something like that because it's a little embarrassing and weird. But I have a spot too, like Sheldon. So that's another meaning of the word spot as a noun. Spot as a noun can also mean a small amount of something usually used a little bit more in British English, like someone might say a spot of tea, which can mean just a little bit of tea. As a verb, spot can mean to see or notice something, as in, can you spot the difference? It can also mean to mark or to put spots on something, as in the carpet was spotted with stains. Or it can also mean to lend money. It's a, this is a slang use. As in, can you spot me a 20? Like, in other words, can you give me $20? And fourthly, it can also be used to help somebody do something physical, like in gymnastics. Now, there's a bunch of other idioms and terms that also use the word spot. The first one is, a leopard cannot change its spots, which means that people don't usually or can't usually change. As in, he cheated on you before, and he will again. A leopard can't change its spots. Number two is to say someone has a soft spot for, or a weak point, or to have a tender, loving feelings towards, as in, she really has a soft spot for puppies. Number three, if something hits the spot, it means it's something that really meets your needs, like in usually food or drink. Like, I was so hot and thirsty, the lemonade really hit the spot. Number four is spot on which means to be exactly right, as in he was spot on with his assessment of why the project failed. Number five, X marks the spot, which means like the exact place of something. Um, the letter X may be written on the location, especially in kids' stories about pirates and buried treasures. You may even hear someone talk about a map. You find a buried treasure and it says X marks the spot. Number six, spot check. This could be used as a noun or a verb, which means to check or an inspection that is random or only lasts for a very short amount of time. As in, I heard they're doing spot checks at the border today, or his boss would sometimes spot check his employees. Number seven, to touch a sore spot. Now this can mean literal, like if you have a sore spot on your body and somebody touches it, it hurts. Like, for me right now, I got a flu shot yesterday and I have a sore spot on my arm. So to touch a sore spot there would mean literally to touch a sore spot. But that's not what we mean as an idiom. As an idiom, it's used to refer to like when you talk about something that may upset a person. As in, when he asked her about her age, he kind of touched a sore spot with her. Number eight is blind spot. This is an area you can't see for example, when driving, most cars have a blind spot where you can't see around you when you are driving all the way. This can be very dangerous. 
newer cars like Teslas have lots of cameras, so blind spots are not really such a big problem anymore. A blind spot can also mean something about your life that you aren't aware of. For example, for example, I could have a blind spot for ways that my YouTube videos could be better and I just don't see it. I don't know what it is. I don't understand it. Number nine is to put someone on the spot, which means to make someone feel uncomfortable about something, as in his questions about my love life really put me on the spot. I didn't want to talk about it. Number 10, be in the spotlight. A spotlight is a big bright light usually used on a stage. And so sometimes it means just a literal, a spotlight or to be in the spotlight. The spotlight is shining on you. But can also mean more to be the center of attention, which can be good and on purpose or maybe not so good. Like if a person is giving a presentation, they are in the spotlight. That's planned and that's good. But it can be bad if someone say is famous and they do something bad or embarrassing and everyone notices and they're kind of in the spotlight and people notice something embarrassing about them. Number 11, tough spot. This means a difficult situation. I'm kind of in a tough spot with money right now. Also a hot spot, which can be an exciting place or it is also a wireless hot spot, which is something that like I have one that I can connect to the internet wirelessly with my laptop and it uses my data from my cell phone. Also there's sunspots, which are darker, cooler areas on the surface of the sun. And you could call something spotty, which means it has spots or it's something uneven or maybe inconsistent about it. Also spot is a common traditional name for a dog. There's no quiz today, but I do have some homework for you. So what I want you to do is use my LLRS method with this lesson to help you with listening and speaking skills. Number one, L. Listen while looking at subtitles while listening to something like this lesson or while reading sentences. Number two, L. This means to listen again, but without subtitles or listen to just sentences without looking at them written out. Number three, R to repeat the sample sentences used in this lesson, for example. And four, S, for shadow, to shadow the sentences. So LLRS stands for listen with subtitles, listen without subtitles, repeat the words in English, and then shadow them, which means to try to say them with a recording. And you should repeat all four of those steps as often as you need to until you learn the material really well. Now you can go through this lesson and find all the sample sentences I gave you or you can click a link that I will give you at the end of this video to go to a page with a list of all the sentences already there for you and where you can download an mp3 with a recording of all them so that you can practice the LLRS method with them. And that's almost all for today's lesson. But before you go, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. And in a few seconds, you will also be able to sign up to get that MP3 that I talked about earlier so you can study with it. And if you have time, you can watch more of my English lessons here on YouTube. Goodbye, and remember, with hope, anything is possible. Number five, X marks the spot, the, which means what I want you to do is use my LLL. But before you go, without looking at subtitles, just listening to without, uh,